The book of Ezekiel is a vivid account of that prophet's visions from God. We are going to discuss one of Ezekiel's prophecies, but when we talk about the prophet Ezekiel, we must start a little before him to understand what was going on to prompt God to choose him. The Israelites, or God's chosen people, were established as a kingdom under the first King Saul, then to King David, and eventually to his son, King Solomon. King Solomon was granted unparalleled wisdom from God but he was lured from God by worshiping the gods of his wives. This displeased God, and he vowed to take the kingdom away from Solomon after his death. The kingdom was split in two. The northern kingdom, called Israel, or the house of Joseph or Ephraim, representing the ten tribes of Israel, and the southern kingdom, called Judah, representing two tribes of Israel. Then after the kingdom was split in two, both kingdoms drifted further away from God and offended him with their immoral and evil practices. So God lifted the protection from the kingdoms and they both went into exile. The northern kingdom was taken by Assyria and the southern kingdom was taken by Babylon. The Israelites were God's chosen people, but they had strayed from God. This is where we get to the story of Ezekiel. He was one of the captives taken by Babylon and held in captivity in the land of the Chaldeans. God came to Ezekiel and showed him visions and how he was to be a prophet or the watchman for the Israelites. He received many visions from God, but the one we are going to analyze is in chapter 37, which is referred to as the Two Sticks Prophecy. Let's read it here. Ezekiel chapter 37, lines 15 through 28. Again, the word of God came to me saying, as for you, son of man, take a stick for yourself and write on it. For Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions then take another stick and write on it. For Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for the house of Israel, his companions, then join them one to another for yourself into one stick, and they will become one in your hand. And when the children of your people speak to you, saying, Will you not show us what you mean by these? Say to him, Thus says the Lord God, Surely I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his companions, and I will join them with it, with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they will be one in my hand. And the sticks on which you write will be in your hand before their eyes. Then say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Surely I will take the children of Israel from among the nations, wherever they have gone, and will gather them from every side and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king over them all. They shall no longer be two nations, nor shall they ever be divided into two kingdoms again. They shall not defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will deliver them from all their dwelling places in which they have sinned, and will cleanse them. Then they shall be my people, and I will be their God. David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they shall all have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments, and observe my statutes, and do them. Then they shall dwell in the land that I have given to Jacob, my servant, where your fathers dwelt, and they shall dwell there, they, their children, their children's children, forever, and my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them, and it will be an everlasting covenant with them. I will establish them and multiply them. I will set my sanctuary in the midst forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Indeed, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The nations also will know that I, the Lord, sanctify Israel when my sanctuary is in the midst forevermore. Now let's look closely at the two sticks. As for you, son of man, take a stick for yourself and write on it, for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. This is talking about the southern kingdom, the stick of Judah. This is the tribe where King David and his son, King Solomon, came from. When the kingdom split, the southern kingdom was ruled by Rehoboam, the son of King Solomon. Now we get to the second stick. Then take another stick and write on it, for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. This is referring to the northern kingdom, the stick of Ephraim. These ten northern tribes split from the southern kingdom under Jeroboam. 
Then join them one to another for yourself into one stick, and they will become one in your hand. Clearly God was going to be uniting the two kingdoms together after he had torn them apart. It says it again in the next verse, And when the children of your people speak to you, saying, Will you not show us what you mean by these? Say to them, Thus say the Lord God, Surely I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel his companions, and I will join them with it, with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they will be one in my hand. And the sticks on which you will write will be in your hand before their eyes. Now most people have taken this to just mean unity of Israel, the joining of the two sticks to become one, the two kingdoms reunited to make one stick. But God operates on so many levels. You have to change your perspective to look at things from a different point of view. Ask yourself, why did God show Ezekiel this vision? Why did he use two sticks as the metaphor? It is always helpful to see things from the end and then look back to see how it connects. God is omniscient and knew when speaking to Ezekiel how this would end. Once you start seeing things from God's perspective, then you start seeing the deeper meaning of the Bible. The two sticks join together to become a cross. Wow, that's beautiful. And make them one stick, and they will be one in my hand. And one king shall be king over them all. God is operating on so many different levels we cannot comprehend until he reveals his deeper mysteries. Yet when we see them, it is beyond the beauty we can behold. The kingdom of Israel was divided around 900 BC. The southern kingdom, which included Ezekiel, was taken into exile in Babylon around 600 BC. And Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross in 33 AD. These events are a century apart, yet when put together they tell a prophetic and interconnected story. Only God could be behind these things. The Bible is real, and it's the truth.